Hey, Formal Sapiens. So today is all about OpenAI. I recorded this and I knew it, it was going to happen. Of course, there was more news afterwards. And frankly, I'm not even going to bother <laughs> to try to predict what's going to happen next. When I recorded this, this was before Sam Alton had been reinstated. He was at the moment going to Microsoft to had a lab over there. Now he is back at OpenAI, which means a lot of different things, big implications for the space. But it doesn't change what I say in this episode. So I'm going to let you listen to what I recorded before with just a little additional context that Sam is back at OpenAI. So you know that now. But anyway, enjoy today's episode. It's just about the craziness at OpenAI. And frankly, even if I were to do an update and re-record the whole thing, probably something else would happen anyway. So <laughs> it's a little crazy. Anyway, enjoy this episode. Enjoy my hot takes. Let me know what you think. Reach out and take care of yourselves. FOMO Sapiens. FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. Welcome to Faux Mondays, the snackable companion show to FOMO Sapiens, which of course will be back with a full episode on Thursday. But until then, happy Faux Mondays, best day of the week. I am, of course, your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night, and FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Now, the FOMO Sapiens in me cannot stop watching the train wreck. That is what the heck is happening over at OpenAI. Now, we've talked about AI a ton on this show because it is the most fomo thing in the entire universe. It basically resurrected venture capital this year when venture capital wait, crashed. Not an AI, actually not in climbing either, but AI, it's just like money flowing. If you have a company and you want to raise money, just throw some AI into the mix. Like say you have a taco truck, just say it's AI, you'll raise money. That's what's going on right now. Now, is that sustainable? I don't think so. Obviously, AI is important, but it's not like it's not been around before. I mean, this technology is obviously transformative, but AI is not a new concept. Large language learning models and chatbots and all that sort of stuff. Uh, that's bringing a new heat into the market. But anyway, OpenAI has been such a big part of this, you know, worth tens of billions of dollars. Everybody's talking about how it's going to change the world. I subscribe to ChatGPT. I do. I use it. I love it. I really do. I, I think it's a great service. And so I am not here to hate on ChatGPT or OpenAI. It has a real utility. It's not perfect, has its flaws, but it has a real utility. But I am here to talk about the drama, Succession AI edition that has been the last couple of days at OpenAI. Now, if you haven't heard about this, show me the rock you're living under. But it's a lot of news. And in fact, I recently realized I missed an entire day of news. So on this topic, I was listening to a podcast and realized I'd missed all these developments. So I am now caught up. But essentially what happened was the CEO, Sam Altman, who previously ran Y Combinator, was terminated by the board. And they put out this terribly cryptic statement saying that his behavior was hindering the board's ability to exercise its responsibilities. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's really hard to know. However, from what I can tell, basically, they have a very unconventional board structure. The board of OpenAI is more like a nonprofit board to ensure that the technology is used appropriately. And there's this group of people, I think it's six people, of which two of them were Altman and another of the sort of folks that left, the president. And then the four other people, and yeah, there was this decision by the four to get rid of the two or to get rid of Sam. And then the other guy left. And then, you know, it kind of hit the airwaves and everybody freaked out. And here we are today. And now there's been all this other stuff. Over the weekend, they were negotiating. Altman was back in the HQ. They even brought in uh, uh, this guy, Will Hurd, who was a member of, of Congress, who had been on the board at some point to come mediate. It didn't work, apparently, because as of Monday, he was not back in his place. And then Microsoft, which invested about $13 billion into OpenAI, hired Sam to basically run this new AI lab there and essentially be able to play with all the stuff he built over OpenAI. It's just been crazy. And then 
OpenAI had actually put the CTO in place and they decided not to go with her. And now they put in the former CEO of Twitch as the new CEO at OpenAI. So all that in like three days, everybody's loving it. It's crazy. What I want to do is give you my hot takes on the succession play over there. So we'll do that right after this break. FOMO. FOMO. All right, we're talking about the drama at OpenAI. And by the way, I gave you a very quick overview because this story is changing. By the time I, I get this into your hands, there'll be a whole new set of stuff. So just read up on it as it goes along because to get into it and give you a whole journalistic thing is not the point of today's exercise. But I got six hot topics for you, six hot takes for you. Number one, do these people not have publicists? The communications here, so poor on behalf of OpenAI, that cryptic statement, what the heck? Totally negligent. You can't fire the most high profile person in the AI industry, which is the most high profile industry in Silicon Valley with a terse statement. Cause you know what happens next? All of these other people who like Sam and are loyal to him go on Twitter and post wonderful things about him. So it looks completely like, it's like if you're trying to play a PR war here, you are losing because you are fighting with, you know, a musket and they're fighting with tactical nuclear weapons. I'm just so underwhelmed by OpenAI's pathetic PR strategy. And frankly, you've raised billions of dollars, like hire a publicist. And if you have a publicist, you know, they're not serving you. That was really amateurish. And just a great example for anybody who runs a business, like it's just, by the way, it's hard. Let me tell you something. I've noticed with all the stuff going on in the Middle East, nobody puts out a statement that doesn't get total, total cancellation vibes. You can't win. So, you know, it's just really hard. But here, if you're going to fire somebody, figure that out. Get it right. Really, really poor stuff. Number two, crazy how much social media kind of elements there are to the story. As I mentioned, employees of OpenAI went on Twitter over the weekend to sort of like, in a very low-key way, express their support for Altman. Really interesting. Then Altman went and negotiated with the folks, the board and others over the weekend at OpenAI headquarters and posted a picture of himself with a visitor badge to Twitter, to X. First of all, it's pretty cheeky. You got to give him a little round of applause for that. But second of all, why are you doing it on Twitter, man, like Twitter is not a good place anymore. First of all, you know, it's just, it's, it's a total sinkhole for bad people. Second of all, just be better, like pick a better, <laughs> less damaging social media network to do your little games on. But I still thought that was kind of interesting. Number three, I've been amazed at how the reporting has been pretty fast and furious. You got reporters covering it. You got employees speculating. You got people tracking delivery people where they found out that everybody on the weekend when they were trying to negotiate Sam maybe coming back had McDonald's, which is, a, I'm really surprised. I mean, I haven't had McDonald's in Asia. It's not very good for you, Sam Altman. If you want to be healthy, no hating on McDonald's, but you know, I would have expected sushi maybe. I guess it's a Sunday. So the fact that this is being dissected on Twitter and other social media networks, and of course on podcasts, the mainstream media, and even you got Kara Swisher who like, she recently said she doesn't really go on Twitter anymore. She was all over Twitter this weekend. So I guess it does show that Twitter is still a factor, which is kind of interesting. But I just found that really interesting that you have this major company where everything's just spilling out all over the place. And that is nasty, which leads me to number four, Microsoft. So think about poor Microsoft. They invest their 13 billion. This is a major part of their strategy. This is what sort of made them major players in the in the AI chatbot space. But somehow they can just have the, the CEO like fired out from under them. And in fact, I, I heard, I don't know if this is true, but I heard on a podcast that they only got a very minor warning. It was like they got like, you know, slight advance warning. And then they were, you know, unhappy about it. Their relationship seems to be quite good between Microsoft and OpenAI and Sam Altman, at least during the Sam Altman times, not anymore. They had done these presentations together, and this is just big money for Microsoft. So the fact that the OpenAI board could fire Sam and put the major strategy of one of the largest tech companies in the world at risk, like, boom, is shocking. 
I really am. I'm like, hmm, Microsoft, why didn't you negotiate a little bit more control when you did your deal? It's $13 million invested. You know, it just really is interesting. It feels like a misstep on their part. Maybe there's more to it than we know out here, but I was just surprised that was even possible. And uh, wow, it's just, that is, can you imagine the phone call? Satya Nadella gets that phone call. He has just got to be apoplectic. Apoplectic. In fact, you know, he hired Sam afterwards. So we'll see if he can salvage something there. I think he probably can. Number five, I do think it's interesting. I mentioned it was being breathlessly covered by the press. I do find it amazing there's still secrets. The fact that nobody really knows exactly why the board fired Sam. There are, you know, there's speculation and based on all the tea leaves, it doesn't look like it was personal kind of stuff. It was more philosophical or something going on around the, whether it's a, uh, the, the, the safety and the for nature versus the nonprofit nature of this business going forward, all that kind of stuff. We live in a world where people leak everything. And the fact that, you know, we're several days out and I still haven't heard the exact reason. I kind of find that amazing. Like, so on that point, I'm surprised. I am surprised because I feel like there's no secrets anymore. So it's very public. A lot is getting out there, but the core reason it's still out there. And that's why people are so interested to watch it. It's like, you just can't stop watching this blank show. And finally, 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 oh, the lack of decision-making skill here. You know, obviously we talk about decision-making here on FOMO Sapiens. This is FOBO to some degree, fear of a better option. And the fact that they hire him, they fire him, and then they decide to try to get him back over the weekend after there's a there's a negative reaction by employees and folks all over the place. Have some principles, people. If you're going to fire somebody like Sam Altman and make a big sort of show of it, you can't just invite him back the next day and say you changed your mind. And I found it really, this was the part that I just was like, oh boy. There is the open AI chief scientist. His name is Ilya Sutskiver. Now he was the guy who led the revolt that got rid of Altman. And then he comes out a couple of days later and says, quote, he deeply regrets my participation in the Bourne's action. So it's like, Ilya, man, think before you do something and then don't change your mind if you don't think you can deliver. Just the lack of decision-making skill, the FOBO, not figuring it out. It reminds me of Brexit. It's so poor. I mean, this company is one of the most valuable companies in Silicon Valley. And Ilya... You just couldn't think it through. You couldn't play the mental chess to figure out what you're going to do. I, I find it very, very diminishing of you. And it's too bad. I don't know you, but I got to tell you, be better next time because that was really poor. And this is just great lessons for all of us. You know, again, what are the lessons we can take for this in our own lives and businesses? Have a plan, learn how to communicate it. Stick to your plan. I mean, we can always change our minds, but you know, don't just like turn around the next day. It's just like it's like zero conviction, man. And also, just communicate appropriately. You know, I mean, we we don't have publicists in our private lives, but just try to think about how you're going to talk about something better than they did. It's not hard. <laughs> All right, that is my hot take on OpenAI. I'm sure we'll be talking about this more, but I just had to get that out. I just had a lot of feelings. See you on Thursday with Tristan and Jordan Mace. Continue our conversation. Until then, take care of yourselves, FOMO Sapiens. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.